Hey, this is John again with another video. This time is going to be an unboxing and first impressions of 16 different knives. Uh, 16 because I have a spending problem and no self-control. And uh, last week, I impulsively bought a bunch of budget knives and a couple higher-end ones uh, in the course of a few days, and they just all arrived today. So I figured, why not get some entertainment out of this? Um, let people see some of these knives. There aren't videos on some of these. Uh, and a, lot, a few of the models are pretty new, so I figured give people my first impressions, let them see the knives, how they work, what they look like in hand. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to unpack them one by one, starting with the Civivis, and then the CJRBs, and then there's going to be a couple of special knives at the end, some higher end ones. So stay tuned for those. All right, so let's start off here. Let me grab one of these Civivis out of the box. This one is the Mini Bull Mastiff. Oh, I need to cut that. Joining me today is my trusty little Alliance Scout. Love some of these packaging. For a uh, inexpensive knife, you get well, you get stickers, get a cloth, get a bag, and you get a really nice knife. Whereas most of these just come in cardboard boxes. Uh, by these, I mean knives in the $50, $60 range. So let's see. Okay. It's kind of a... Uh, not as chunky as I thought it would be, honestly. It's kind of slim, actually. Nice thin blade stock. Centering seems good. Let's see if I can spidey flick it first time. Yep. Nice. Really smooth action. Really, really smooth. That's excellent. I'm a big fan of these little cleaver, sheep's foot, tall blade knives. I think they tend to cut really well. And from what I've heard, this one has one of the thinner grinds. So hopefully, if I can get that in there, not really. It does have a very, very thin grind and a nice dainty tip on it. Very dainty even. Let's see if I can. There we go. That's a very, very slim tip. So if you're looking for some fine cutting and you like these style of knives, this would definitely be one to check out. Has their deep carry clip. Recessed screws, but not a recessed clip. I don't mind that really. Nice feeling G10. That action though, every Civivi I'm just always, I'm so happy with the action. Missed it that time, but that's really nice. I'm planning on selling most of these knives, but this one will probably be a keeper for me. Because, like I said, I like this style. Oh, missed it there again. Gotta get used to this. There we go. He's gotta get your finger right in that groove and then flick it out. So, there we go. This is the Civivi Mini Bull Mastiff. This is the blue model. Let's see if I can get the focus not on that mat. By the way, in case anyone asks, that's a JHO Knives mat. I got it when I bought one of their. Uh, Models, I believe it was the Blanca, a little fixed blade. I don't have that knife anymore, but I kept the mat because I like it so much. I think it's supposed to be a bandana or something, but yeah. It's a nice knife. Okay, let's get on to the second one. I'm going to keep these here, sort of in frame, sort of not. Keep my alliance up there, get this box out of the way, and we'll move on. All right, number two up. Let's grab one from the bag. I'm liking this format. Okay, this is the Shredder. I've seen a few reviews on these. And they seem to be one of the more popular new models. You got the same stuff. I'm not going to go through every CVV box, every bag, because they all have the same two stickers and cloth and all that. Here's the shredder. It's got a little bit of oil on it this time. Let me just wipe this off. There we go. Nice coarse G10 as it says on the box. A little rougher than the Mini Bull Mastiff. Black clip on this one. Same clip style with the recessed screw, but not the recessed clip, which a lot of people complain about that. I don't mind. I find my pants slide right over that little uh, metal there anyway. 
Let's check out the action here. Nice. That is snappy. Again, slim blade stock, which Civivi seems to like. Which I'm a fan of too. Nice slim tip. Lock up solid. I want to check the full Mastiff's lock up. Yep. Solid lock up on both these. Action's not as smooth as the Bull Mastiff, but it's pretty smooth. Spidey flicks nicely. This is uh, quite a bit longer than I was expecting, honestly. But I like it. I like this a lot. The Ergos are great, even with that thin blade stock. You can still choke up, it doesn't feel too uncomfortable. I like that a lot. I think it's because it's such a it's such a thin, slim blade. It doesn't really want to drop shut like the Bull Mastiff does. The Bull Mastiff has a really it's thin, but it's it's tall and it feels heavier for sure. But this is very nice. This is very very nice to play with. I like that a lot. So that's the Shredder, it's the VV Shredder. I think all of these are basically available in the same colors. I think they all have black, blue. Get to the focus, there we go. Black, blue, tan, and green. Some will come in carbon fiber in Damascus, some won't. Some like uh, a plethora, so you'll see ahead. <clears throat> Excuse me. Some like the plethora, so you'll see ahead even have wood grips available, which is pretty sweet. But that's the shredder. Put that down here. Turn that back up. Let's move these out a little bit. All right, on to the next one. Next up in the grab bag is the yeah, get that out of there. So this is the Dogma. I think this actually looked pretty similar to the Shredder, from what I remember. A lot of these models kind of look maybe a little bit samey. Sorry, it's hard to cut this uh, tape while looking through the viewfinder. Oh yeah, it looks like a smaller Shredder. So here's the Shredder. There's the Dogma. I do admit I like the Dogma more already, just because of the size. Uh, different grind, a little bit. It looks like, I think they both have hollow grinds actually, but the grind is not as tall on this Dogma. Action, <clears throat> excuse me there. Action is actually just as snappy, drops a little better. I might just have to loosen that pivot on the Dogma a little bit, or on the, uh, Shredder, rather. But this this G10 feels fantastic. It's very smooth, actually. It's a lot smoother than it looks. You have this texture here. Sorry, I have a call incoming. Let me just ignore that. It's probably a spammer or a scam or something. Um, this G10 is very, very smooth, and this this texture doesn't really add anything to it. It's, it's kind of slick, actually. Oh, maybe there's a little bit of texture added in there. It's not as aggressive as it looks, though, is what I'm trying to get across. It feels great, though, in the hand. It really does. This might be one of my favorites of the bunch. So far, at least. We only, we're only three knives in, but it's already a favorite. Well, a little harder to spidey flick. A little stronger to tent, I think. And a little smaller hole. Yeah. I think it's made to be flipped. For sure. That's nice. So this is the Dogma. Nice clip point blade, hollow grind. Oh, and I forgot to mention, I think most of these are in D2. You can see it right there. Let me zoom in there. It says D2. Uh, but the this little guy right here is in 9CR18 MOV, which, as far as I'm told, is... I, don't quote me on this. I think people say it's similar to VG10. It's like China's answer to that. I'm not sure on that though. This will be my, I believe, my first knife in that steel, so we'll see how it is. Yeah, there it is. Wow, that's small. 9CR18 MOV. Okay. So that right there was the Dogma. We got the Dogma Shredder, Mini Bull Mastiff. And let's move on. Sorry about the lighting before, I just noticed it was uh, getting a little cloudy outside, so I turned on my indoor lights here. So let's get on to the next knife. Oh, 
Easy. I should just be skipping this actual unboxing thing for all the CVs. They're all the same. But, you know, whatever. Consistency. This, I didn't even look at what this was. I believe this is a Praxis. No, Backlash. This is the carbon fiber, overlay Backlash, 9CR18. This is an all black model. I'm not usually into black knives, but that's nice. That's real nice. See if I can get the focus in here. No, oh, come on, focus. That damn Matt wants to take all the focus. There we go. Might have to change that in the future. Comment if you hate that map, by the way. <laughs> I might end up swapping that for something more neutral. But, yeah, this is a, it's a G10 with a carbon fiber top to it. Just uh, stuck on there, basically. It's not like a sticker or anything, but it's, it's a composite. Nice uh, contoured scales there. A little bit of contouring, at least. So yeah, this is the Backlash. I've actually had a Backlash before. I forgot about it. It had the best action I had felt on a liner lock. And now I have all these other CVVs that are all just as good. This one's fantastic. Doesn't feel as drop shuddy as my old one, but my old one was used, so maybe it was more broken in. Um, yeah, keep in mind, all of these knives are brand new. So right out of the box, they might not have the most amazing action. I'm sure they'll be better once I take them apart and lube them. But they're all very pleasant so far. I have no complaints, really. Again, you got a finger troll you can choke up on. Civiva lovers are finger trolls, as you can see. Everything so far has had one. Nice thin blade stock, like before. Nice fine tip. I'm loving that there's finally a company that gets the point of having thin blade stock opposed to really thick ones. Like Rayot, I love Rayot, but their standard use of like 0.15 inch blade stock is infuriating to me. So many good designs ruined by thick blade stock, it barely cuts right. So I don't know, I'm a little picky there I guess. But that's a beauty right there. Once again, got that. You know, the marking stands out a little more, being white against the black, than CR18. Yeah, don't confuse that with 8CR13, which is just really crappy steel. Um, 9CR18, apart from being formatted the same way in the name, is nothing like it. So don't let that draw you away. Okay, so that was uh, that was the backlash. Let's move on. Next up, just like taking the plastic off on the side here. Oh, is the Picaro? Picaro? I'm not sure. It says Course G10, so let's see how that is. If it's coarse like the, uh, I forgot the name of Ferrari, Shredder, it'll be pretty nice. This one I was looking forward to because it had weird thumb slips. Oh, a little different there, different bag. Kind of a softer plastic bag with a silica gel inside, that's nice. Yeah, kind of weird thumb style looking on thing on this. It's got the big opening hole, but also a stud in there. I don't think I've seen that before. That's pretty cool. A little dirty in the box. What is that? Is that a ding already? Yeah, that's uh That appears to be damaged to the G10 right out of the box, which is... Oh, maybe not. I don't know what that is. I think it's a corner of G10 that's just like chipped or something. Which is not great to see on a brand new knife, but... I'll allow it. We'll see how the picker all works. Okay. Very stiff action. Wow. I think that locked up. Nope. All right. The action on this is very, very, very stiff. I, I don't know what happened with this one. Okay. Um, let me pause for a second. I'm going to go get a tool and see if I can maybe loosen up the pivot on this one. Be right back. All right, I'm back. I played with the pivot a bit. Uh, it's a little off center now, but I can at least open it. I can flick it open at least. Couldn't do that before. Not super pleased with how that is out of the box, but I don't mind something being a little off center. It's not that big of a deal to me. But the action now is good. 
that thumb stud with the flick. It doesn't drop as freely as the rest. I'm pretty sure there's on bearings like the rest of them. I'll update if it isn't. Possibility it could be on washers, but not with this action, I don't think. No, it's got to be on bearings. It's just a little tighter than the rest. That might wear in. This is the Picaro. Again, very similar shape to the rest. Also has a finger coil. Very comfortable. This is actually one of the more ergonomic models. Didn't actually realize it was the black blade when I was buying it. But I mentioned before I don't really like black blades generally, but uh, this looks pretty good with the green. Yeah. It's a good looking knife. I really have to change that bam, damn backdrop. It really wants to take the focus out. There we go. This is a D2, like most of them are. So this is not maybe the most fidgety, fidgety, fidgetable, or fidgety. Not the most fidgety Civivi out there, but if you loosen up a bit, it's uh, just fine. So there's the Picaro. Probably my least favorite so far, just because of that little issue. But uh, it's not bad. Still worth the money. Um, I'll put prices in the description, but most of these are about 50 bucks. So let me put this one down. And actually, let me swap out this mat here because I'm having issues with the focus, and then I'll be back. All right, so I've swapped out the, the uh, JHO bandana with just this orange envelope. I don't have much else laying around, so I figured this is probably the next best bet. So uh, let's get on to the next knife. If it doesn't work out, I'll find something else. Yeah, this is all off the cuff. There's nothing planned here, as you can probably tell. Nothing professional. This is just uh, someone bored in quarantine making a video on their off time because they have nothing else to do. So you get what you pay for, right? Let's see. Oh, this is what I was talking about before. This, I did not show the box. This is the Plethoros Golden Sandalwood Handle Damascus. It's the first knife I've ever bought in Damascus. Wow, that's beautiful. That's really nice. Honestly, wasn't sure about it in pictures, but in hand, that looks really, really nice. Feels beautiful, too. Or, yeah, sure. Feels beautiful. Looks nice. Feels nice and looks beautiful is what I was trying to say. Ooh, that action is very nice. Better than my Anthropos. The Anthropos I had before was a little stiff as well. Ended up selling it. But this is really nice. Nice polish. You can probably see my camera and the little tripod right there. That's gorgeous. Not the darkest Damascus, but very well defined. Nice flowing pattern. That's beautiful. That's a gorgeous knife. Oh, that drops like nothing else. Damn. I can get past that detent ball right there. That's nice. This knife, I believe, was $100? $102? Something like that. I got these from White Mountain. At least uh, some of them. Some, I, got, I split between White Mountain, Blade HQ, and uh, the later knives were private purchases. But basically, whoever had them in stock. But yeah, I believe this was $102 at White Mountain. You can get 10% off with various codes. Um, I don't have a code, obviously, but uh, I used uh, either LTK or SDWMK for Slicey Dicey and LTK for uh, Love Them Knives. Either one will get you 10% off the whole site. So after after that, this was like 92 bucks or something like that. But god damn, that's nice. That's definitely a keeper. Yeah, the action is a lot better in my Anthropos. Wow, okay. That's nice. I'm going to put that right over here. That was the Civivi Plethoros in Damascus and Sandalwood. All right, we're running out of Civivis. Uh, next Civivi up, we have three more. Next one up is, this is the Little Fiend. Another thumb stub one. 
No, it's too pretty to use. Use the Picaro again. But I hope this is honestly better than the Picaro in action. Because this was one of the ones I was looking forward to most. Oh, sorry, not a thumbstand knife. I'm thinking of something else. I think I'm thinking of a hooligan. Is that Civivi? I get their models mixed up. There's too many of them damn models. Not that I'm complaining. Choice is always good. Yeah, that's the little fiend. It looks like an even smaller shredder. So we have the shredder, the dogma, and then the little fiend. They all kind of remind me of each other. Not that it's bad. A lot of Civivi knives are kind of similar, but they're good designs. So why not, you know, keep doing similar stuff? Oh, that's really nice with those grooves. Most finger grooves don't tend to fit me because I have rather large hands, but uh, that one fits me very well. I will say this thumb ramp seems really far back for me. Maybe only really works in this position. Up here, I kind of want to put it in this groove, which that might be why that groove is there. See that there? So you can kind of bear down or you can push into something. Yeah, good ergonomics. Again, nice hollow grind, nice thin stock. Tip not as dainty on this actually for its size. I think it actually has a stronger tip than the other two I just showed you. But this is very nice. How about the action? Does it drop? Eh, not quite. Doesn't have to though. Rockets out. Can I flick it? Yep. That's the little fiend. This is in gray. Oh, I mentioned the colors before. Black, green, blue, and tan. A lot of them are in gray as well. That's nice. That's right up there with my favorites now. I'm gonna put my favorite ones over here. Uh, very loose organization here. These are good. These are great. I don't anticipate uh, anything being bad, so I don't, I don't have to make a space for those. All right, next one. Next up here, second to last, is the Vexer. I don't remember what this one looks like, to be honest. Well, the Knowing City, probably a lot like the Little Fiend Dogman Shredder. Oh, it's a big boy. God damn. Okay. That's large. Larger than I expected. Still relatively thin blade stock. Tip is uh, pretty good on it. Ooh. Oh, I like that blade shape. That's nice. Oh yeah, that fits my big hands very well. I only extended this groove up here so you can use it choked up. Wow, that's, that's excellent ergonomics. Let's see if I can get that all on frame. This big knife. That's a nice one. Nice heavy blade. Falls right down. Definitely up there with the plethoros when it comes to being drop shuddy. Oh, that was my bad. I'm trying to weakly light switch it. And I hit my tripod there. Jesus. Like I said, you get what you pay for in these videos. Oh, that's the Vexer. That's very, very beautiful. Very ergonomic. I like the size. Uh, it might be too large for some people. I'm going to put the specs, basic specs like blade length and overall weight in the, the videos, in the, sorry, in the description box. But uh, this is probably like a three and a quarter inch blade. Let's compare it to uh, the rest of the family here. So we have Vexer, Shredder, Dogma, and Little Fiend. I think these are all very similar knives. You might be able to add the picker to that too, but it's kind of a weird one with the thumb stud. So like I said, yeah, Vexer, Shredder, Dogma, Little Fiend. <coughs> Excuse me there. I don't have the Rona, I promise. Just a dry throat. <clears> throat> uh, yeah, so... This, another one of my favorites. The blade just feels stout without being overbuilt. Like, a lot of knives you buy, like, uh, I don't know, certain brands I won't name, 
they're just big for the sake of being big and it makes them feel stout and tough and stuff. This feels tough without being ridiculous. It feels like you can use it for some serious work. I believe this is D2. Yep, D2. Little tiny letters there. Love the zoom function on this camera. So easy to use. If I can get it in there, it's very light. There we go, D2. Sorry, you have to look at my, my dry ass bitten fingers here too, but uh, maybe I'll start wearing gloves. Uh, yeah, the Vexer. Kind of a big boy. Big boy, big action, if that makes sense. Good action, I guess. Wow. Um, I'm doing that sideways, by the way, so I don't hit something because I'm kind of close to the table right now. Normally, I don't open a knife like this. Well, that's kind of cool. Whoosh. Yeah. That's, be that's a beauty right there. I'm a fan of that. It goes over here. So basically, that entire family is, uh, is sitting over here now. Good stuff all, all the way there over there. Uh, again, these are not bad. These are good. I might have a little bit of problem with the stiffness on this, but, you know, backlash is perfectly fine. And last Civivi. What is this one now? I don't remember even what I ordered. Ah, the Brigand. Tangy 10. The only Tam one I've ordered. Come on. This one I was looking forward to probably the most. I like the blade shape and the general looks of it. A little small, a little lean, a little common, maybe not lean. Got a little bit of thickness to it. But uh, definitely not a big knife. Probably on par with the Little Fiend. Ah, bigger than the Little Fiend. What the hell am I talking about? Maybe on par with this. Yeah, it's a little bit closer. The Dogma. But uh, very different blade shape, obviously. Kind of a sheep's foot. Big fan of sheep's foot, especially when they have this weird clip point. Very sword looking to it. Oh, action's very nice. Ooh, it's gotten really nice to tent. You can feel it when it closes. I know you can't feel that, maybe you can hear it. It's got almost a springy sound to it. Kind of like it. It's a dogma, only one opening method, unlike uh, most of these. Only other one here is the backlash, it's just a flipper. But excellent action. Nice ergos. Feels uh, thicker in the hand because the scales are a little thicker. They're almost contoured there with the chamfering. But it feels substantial without being too big. It's a nice design. The uh, jimping is uh, a little bit far back for me because my big hand's especially choked up. I, can't, I don't get that jimping at all. But um, it feels really good in the hand. Again, blade stock, pretty thin. Tip, very dainty, especially with this clip point. That'll be nice for some slicing. Probably gonna take this thing to some fruit. But uh, D2 again. You can see it right there. Whoosh. Just like that. Yeah, Civivi Brigand. One of my favorites here. So I'm gonna stop doing this favorite side thing because I'm running out of space on the one side. All these are good. All these are good so far. I have no. No regrets purchasing anything of these. Um, I am probably going to sell most of them just because I spent way too much money. But uh, I don't regret trying any of them out. They're all good knives. I would recommend all of them. The Picaro, I'm sure I just got just a stiff one. I'm sure they're not all like this. But like I said, unless you're really, really picky and you want your $50 knife to be on center and have a great action, uh, you shouldn't be disappointed. Uh, mine's just a bit off center and the action is great now. Not necessarily false shutty. But, you know, it doesn't need to be. So, yeah. So, just a recap so far. I think these are all the Civivis. Let me double check here. Yep, that's all of them. So, we have the Brigand. The Picaro. The Little Fiend. Dogma. I'll try and move these. The Shredder, Vexer, the Plethoros, I'm just going to stack these, Backlash, and the Mini Bull Mastiff. That is my pile of Civivis. So uh, we'll move on now to some CGRBs.
I'll get these out of the way. All right, next up are some CTRBs. I've owned one before. It was a full-size feldspar. I still have it, actually. It ended up being my project knife. I ended up acid and stone washing it, uh, resharpening it, and then uh, what I do, added a tent ramp to it. So it's been played with a bit, but I'm curious to see how these ones are. I've never handled any of these before. And from looking at the boxes, it seems like they don't actually have names on them. No, just model numbers. So we'll be surprised as we pull them out of the box. Let's start here. This is the J1909-COP. Very catchy name. If I remember the actual names, this is heavy as shit, too. What is this? Oh, I happen to, I know what this is. It's so heavy. Yep. If I remember the names of these, I'll tell you. If not, I'll put them in the description. This, I believe, is the Baranka. God damn, this thing is beefy. Uh, as you can probably tell, copper scales, copper backspacer, steel liners, which I don't even know are relieved. Let's see the action. Ooh, that's nice. Let's see, is this relieved though? Did they figure why bother if the scales are copper? Yeah, they did. Okay, so no no reliefs there. Interesting sheep's foot blade with kind of the square point to it and a nice ramp up front. You have this ramp up here, but no finger choil. This is, maybe could be used if you have smaller hands. I can barely get my finger in there. I wouldn't feel comfortable with that. But, uh, okay, smooth action. Not super drop shutty, but very smooth. Oh, actually, pretty drop shutty. Damn, this has some heft to it. This is the first knife I've handled with copper scales. I always knew they were heavy. I didn't realize it would be this heavy. This has definitely got some heft to it. Nice shiny pocket clip, which, you know, everyone loves shiny pocket clips right now. I don't. I'm not a big fan of them. Uh, unlike the Civivis, it does not have recessed screws, and it doesn't have a recessed clip either. So that's probably going to snag on your pocket trying to get it in all the way. So you might be able to get your pants up to there. Stuffing it past here might be a problem. Interesting. Okay. This is D2. I believe all of these are D2. So yeah, this is the Baranka. I picked this up because I wanted something with copper scales. God damn, this feels beefy just because of how big it is. Blade stock on this is not unreasonable either. It's uh, a little thicker. I think thicker than anything in the series I just showed you. It is centered. Tip on it is actually pretty thin. Pretty slim. So again, might be good at carving up some fruit. Almost a full flat grind on there. I like the action on that a lot. Could use maybe a little jumping on the flipper tab. You see I've slipped off it a couple times. So I feel like I'm going to slip off it. But it works alright. Push button probably works the best. Yeah, the Civiva Bronca. Hefty, but uh, nice. I feel like I might, <laughs> I might have, uh, oh, you can see, what is that, machine marks? Yep, that's pretty ugly. See the nice round milling marks right there? So this is real copper, but I mean, might not Artisan or CGRB, whoever made this, uh, didn't take the best care in machining it. Yeah, that's pretty ugly. Uh, this will probably be on the cell pile just because aesthetically and Weight-wise, I don't like it. I might end up picking a G10 Bronca because they do make those. Um, but this was worth it, I think, just to try out a copper knife. I don't know. I might end up getting a copper Natrix or something in the future. If I want one that's more well-made. But uh, this is not, I mean, poorly made. This is not poorly made where it counts. It's got some finish issues. Mostly right around the pivot there. That's real damn ugly. You can see more machine marks in the grooves there. But yeah, this knife was, I believe, oh man, I don't even know, I should have gotten this on a tablet or something first. 50 bucks, 56, 60, something around there. It was not expensive for being copper in D2. It's about the same price as the Civivis I paid for. So this is expensive for a CGRB. Most of these, I think, run like 30 to 40 bucks, whereas the Civivis are 50 to 60. Um, so one of the Civivis there was 102. So this is definitely like... If you put the budget brands we have in tiers, this is definitely a tier below in terms of cost. Um, not in action, though. Action is just as good as the CVVs. Just as good. Also on bearings, like all these are. Yeah, action is good. Like I said, might pick up a G10 one. Not a fan of that one right there. Yep, finger smell like copper now. Great. 
All right, next up. It's the J1912S NTG. No idea what that means, but this box is like half the weight. I don't think I ordered any more all metal knives. I could be wrong. Let's see what this one is. Oh, this is the small feldspar. I mentioned before I have a large feldspar I like a lot. I want to try out the small one. This one is in the natural micarta. I think I actually ordered this from Amazon. This wasn't from Blade HQ or White Mountain. D2. I don't know if you've noticed, for some reason, I don't think Artisan knows what serial means. They put serial, S-E-R, on other knives, but then they put the model number. So just in case you have one of these and you're wondering, no, that's not an individual serial number. That's the model, J1912S. So all the models will have that same number. Kind of weird, but something they do with Artisan and CGRB, both lines. Action. Ooh, that's snappy. That's nice. Ah, ooh, drop shot nice day too. Very snappy. Can Spidey flick it. I like that a lot. Just as much as my full size. This one has maybe a tad bit of lock stick. See if you can hear this. Yeah, a little bit, but not really noticeable. My other one's perfectly smooth. This might wear in. But uh, felt, I mean, what else can I say about this thing? Everyone has reviewed them. They're very well regarded. This is like the default CGRB budget model at the moment. Or CGRB model, I guess, since they're all budget models. Everyone loves these things. This is the small. Natural G10. Same pocket clip that was in the Bronco, the one I don't like very much. You know, before I be too hard on it, let me actually put this in my pocket and see if it snags on my jeans. Yep. <laughs> okay. I'm not being too hard on it. So my jeans can't get past those screws, really, because there's not that much space there. Like, if I stuff them, I'm sure they'll get past there, but then a little snag coming out. So whatever. Small feldspar. Very, very nice. Nice stone wash finish. I forgot to show the finish on the Bronca. I believe it's the same. Yeah, nice stone washing. I'm glad they're not blasting this D2. Like uh, some brands I won't, that won't be named. Ends up just getting rusty. Let's take a look at this Bronca right here. Yep, same stone washing. Looks nice. Okay, so that was a small feldspar. Let's move on. All right, next up, J1911 ALC. Oh, I lied. I have one more metal knife. Didn't feel like one because I believe it's aluminum scaled. Oh, that feels nice. That's very slick. This is the agave. Yeah, the agave. Very nice kind of pseudo Warncliffe. It's not it's not straight, but it's got that kind of profile going on. I don't like to call things Warncliffe when they're not. I know a lot of people in the industry overuse that term. This is, if anything, just got kind of a weird drop point. Once again, you see Serial, J1911, D2, same CGRB pocket. Oh, whoa, whoa, not the same pocket clip. Actually recessed into the aluminum. Let me try that in my pocket real quick, see how it is. Beautiful. Beautiful. So that recessed clip goes all the way to the top here. My jeans will go all the way to the top. Like makes it carry nice and, uh, nice and deep. Great action on this. Excellent action. A lot smoother than the other two. Uh, maybe not as, as uh, smoother than the feldspar. Smoother than the bronca. Not as drop shows as the feldspar, but just as smooth. That's nice. This is my favorite so far of the three. It is slick in the hand, but it has a very solid feel without being over the top. Uh, fine tip on there. Not too thick blade stock. Maybe a little thinner than the bronca. No, about the same as the bronca. I don't know why it feels thinner. Maybe it doesn't, especially up here. You can tell how wide it is. But a nice grind on there. Let's see if I can get a focus there. No, I can't get that. But I like this a lot. This is the Agave. Model 1911. J1911. It's the aluminum model. Once again, they make them with uh, G10 scales. The aluminum on this seems just fine. There's no machine marks on the outside, in the pockets or anything. Get my ugly finger out of the way. Yeah, it looks just fine, honestly. Probably cast aluminum, but I mean, it looks all right. I have no issues with that at all. 
a little sharp in here. Can maybe use a little bit of chamfering, but uh, it's not too bad. I like this. I'm going to continue my little favorite thing over here. This goes over here. And I'm going to put this over here too because I love it. Little Alliance Scout. That might get a review sometime. All right, next up. This one feels a little hefty, but I don't think I got any more metal knives. I said that before. Could be wrong. It's the 1910 NTG. Might just be a larger knife. Yeah, it's a larger knife. Ah, this has to be the mangrove. The 1910 mangrove. Again, natural G10. Oh, I didn't notice in the pictures. It has a texture to it. Let's see if I can get that. It has channels cut in its contour. I thought it was just flat scales in the photo. You can see here. It's it's not quite an Anzo pattern where you have these two things meeting up in different directions, but it's got the same kind of cuts into it. That's nice. Now what I liked about this was the blade shape. Oh, nice size flipper tab too. It, it, no jimping on it or anything. Oh, I, that was my fault. No jimping on it or anything, but uh, it feels good. Not as snappy as the rest. I do like that blade chip though. I do like it a lot. Finger troll on here. Nice forward ramp. Okay. I was worried when I got this it might have a recurve, but it doesn't, so I'm happy about that. Very, very drop shutty. The tent's actually a little weak for how big this uh, blade is. You can easily fail this. I mean, if you try though, it's no issue. It's kind of on the border being fine. Like, it's just over the edge of being fine. I think it's the tent's okay. Push buttoning it doesn't seem to, yeah, it seems okay. But the tent's a little weak. I would like it to be stronger considering the size of this blade. This is a thicker blade and it's bigger than the rest. As you can see here, it's a little thicker. Again, oh, maybe my eyes are deceiving me. It could be just as thick, but it's definitely bigger. And taller, heavier. Yeah, I might play with the tent on this just to make it perfect because otherwise I like this knife a lot. Ergos are fantastic. Feels really good with those contoured, textured scales. Oh, look at that. Scale, uh, the uh, clip is recessed. It must be these new models that have recessed clips. Maybe the Bronco's an older one? I don't know. Uh, let me stop. try and get that in there. There we go. Yeah. That's the mangrove. I got this because it looked kind of unique. Flips all right. Not the best attempt. Could be a little stiffer, but perfectly serviceable. If you're used to knives, you shouldn't have any trouble with this. If you're new to knives, you might have some issues. Basically, just light switch it and give it a little bit of follow through, and it's just fine. So that's the mangrove. I'm not 100% on this one, so I'm going to put it over here. It's definitely not as... Uh, I don't want to say bad, but I don't, I, I don't dislike it as much as I dislike the Bronca, but I just really need to fix that the tent. All right, last CGRV before we move on to our premium knives. This is the J1904CF. This feels a little hefty too. Is this a bigger knife too? I don't remember what the, any of these are, honestly. When I got this package, all I remembered was the mangrove. Oh, this is the crag. Yeah, this is the hefty boy. I want one of these since this is one of the earlier models. Wow, that feels like shit. Okay. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Uh, one thing I'm going to do, this is definitely, I believe, a, maybe not a sticker, but it's uh, it's not even peel ply like Spyderco does. This is, I think, just a very thin layer of, of uh, carbon fiber on top of G10. It's a very, very slick. It feels nothing like actual carbon fiber. But... Uh, I might end up trading this for a G10 one already. I haven't even opened the knife, but... Yeah, that feels good. See, if the mangrove had this detent, I would like it a hell of a lot more. This has a probably even bigger, heavier blade than the mangrove. But the detent is much better. It flies out much easier. Nice and snappy. Falls shut easily. I love the shape of this. I told you before I like the cleaver, sheep's foot, whatever the hell you want to call them style. Big, tall grinds. Nice thin edges. Yeah, that's nice and thin. All these seem to have the same blade stock, except for the felt spar. I believe it's like a little thinner. But uh, that was my fault right there. 
has not been push buttoned. Uh, can a little bit. This definitely favors the light switch. I think because the button is right there on the pivot, you can't really push button it that much. If you angle it down, you can. But that's the Crag. This is one of the older models, like one of the original models, like the first like two or three they came out with. Yeah, as it's an older model, it has the old style non-recessed clip. Which I don't, you know, it's not great, but could be worse. Uh, I do like this knife a lot. I am almost definitely going to sell it though and get a G10 one. I just figured, you know, they had a carbon fiber option. Maybe it'll be good, maybe it'll suck, who knows. Sadly, this feels like crap. I would have rather had them just do some peel ply stuff like Spyderco where it isn't even G10, it's just peel ply, or sorry, it isn't even carbon fiber. It just looks like it, that would be nicer. But uh, yeah, this is uh, a nice knife with kind of crappy scale material, crappy fi uh, finish. But the knife itself, if you like the style, I highly recommend it. Um, I don't have that bull mastiff on me. I put the box to the side. Let me go get it. There it is. So I know, oh, I have to tend so much snap here. Uh, I know Civivi is coming out with a full size bull mastiff, so I'll compare them when I get that. Because again, I'm probably gonna have a different one of these. I'm definitely still gonna have this. And I'm probably getting the full size bull mastiff. I don't know why I wouldn't. But uh, there's a size comparison. It's definitely a little smaller. Uh, the mini bull mastiff. It's just a size comparison for you guys. So these are both very nice uh, cleaver style folders. I would recommend either one. This one I just recommend you don't get the carbon fiber unless you really like the look. If you like the look and you're okay with it being slick, it's fine. Like it just, it just looks like fair carbon fiber to me. And it feels just slick like a sticker or something. It might actually be a sticker. I don't want to try and peel it off. You see, I uh, see, I can see any edges or anything to it. It looks like it's sanded down nicely. I don't know. I don't know what they're doing here. Scales don't feel nice, don't look nice. That's my main concern. Otherwise, great knife, great action, much snappier than the mangrove. Almost as snappy as the mini bull mastiff, but understandably not as uh, much because it's a bigger blade. But there we go, CGRB Crag. Again, buy this knife, do not buy these scales. <laughs> Get a G10 model, you'll thank me later. Okay, so that's going over there, it's getting sold. Uh, okay, um, I guess I'm just going to leave these on the table because I don't have much else to do. And then uh, we're going to get into the two premium knives I bought. Uh, they're not super expensive, they're both in the $300 range, but they're certainly premium when it comes to these, you know, $35 to $50 knives I've been showing. So let me go get one of those. Alright, first off is this. I have no idea if this original box it comes in, probably not, because I don't think these knives have been made in a while. Let me just unwrap it here. Not sure why I'm even bothering with a nice pink color. Because this, again, it's not factory packaging. Ah, you might already recognize this knife. I believe Nick Shabazz did a review on it. He, his was a little different with the scales. But this is an Olsen M9. Button lock manual flipper. Now I've had a few button lock manual flippers, including the uh, Medford Smooth Criminal, which was kind of a piece of shit. Uh, for more reasons than one. Sometimes, like the Medford, you get one that doesn't have a detent and it just sucks the flip, like you wonder why the flipper is even there. I'm hoping this one doesn't like this. I'm hoping it's more like a Protec. Protec seems to know you can do a detent well while still having a button lock, so let's test it out. Yep, that's nice. That flips very nice. Bit of lock stick. Don't mind it though. Wow, okay, that's a beautiful knife. It's the Olsen M9. I paid, I believe, $315 for this on Knife Swap on Reddit. Reasonable blade stock. Nice tall grind. Nice and... Oh, is that, is that a hollow grind? I can't tell. Let's see if I can get that. I don't know. Let me see him personally. I don't know what kind of grind that is, but it's nice and thin. The blade actually reminds me a lot of my Spyderco Advocate was a Gail Bradley design. I don't think Gail Bradley had anything to do with this. This is a custom Rod Olson knife. This has the checkered carbon fiber. 
you can probably see there are some voids in the corners. I don't mind that much. And the scales do not perfectly fit the inlays, like on the, uh, on the, on the titanium, the relief. I think that's by design, though, because it's even all the way. It's not like it's jutting out different sides. It's just he chose to really, uh, leave a bit of relief around the carbon fiber. And it's on both sides, of course. There's no frame lock or anything, so there's no reason for this to be asymmetrical. This is a beautiful knife. Nice and light, too. I'm going to put basic specs down below. But uh, I like this a lot. Definitely has some lock stick. I don't know if that'll break in or that's how it is. It might be considered a safety feature since uh, the button to stand kind of proud. I don't know. I'm just I'm just guessing that. I have no idea, really. It might just be how it is. I don't mind it, though. The action is fantastic. It's really nice. Really fun to play with. I feel like I'll be playing with this all day now. I don't know, my other knife though, I'm about to show you, I may be playing with that more, but uh, we'll see. Yeah, Rod Olson M9. I don't know if he's being made anymore. I don't actually know anything about Rod Olson. I've heard of him before, but I, I don't know his business really. I don't know what other models he makes, what he makes currently, if he's even still making knives. I don't even know when this was produced, but uh, I believe the blade steel is RWL34. It's perfectly fine with me. I do like it. I know Rayot uses it a lot. I do like me some Rayot. I, I can flip this out. Hard to do on camera because it's so little room, but... Interesting. If I flip it out, there's not really any lock stick. But if I use the flipper tab, there's definitely lock stick. Interesting there. Not sure why that's the case. But I do like this. This won't be going anywhere anytime soon. I have a soft spot for button locks. Uh, oh, it feels just so good in the hand. Yeah. Big fan of that so far. That was stiff right there, damn. But yeah. Beautiful knife. Nice construction. Nice action. Once again, proving that uh, not only is it uh, easy to make, Maybe not easy, possible to make a flipper with a button lock, but uh, you can do it very well. Oh, very, very off center. Just noticed that. Was that me playing around with it? Did I loosen up the blade somehow? Oh yeah, it's a little, little weak. Let me see, a little uh, loose. What the hell is this pivot? Is that a T6? Why would you have a T6 pivot? Yeah, it is. Okay. Nope, oh, still off center. Still off center. Damn. Well, that might just be how it is. Lock up solid now, though. I don't mind that much. Like I said, I don't really care about centering by itself. The reason I think a lot of people complain is because it's usually indicative of other problems, like uh, poor detent strength or just poor fitment, bad grind. A lot of things. It can be a poor action, like loose action. That's the biggest one. But action on this is now solid. No big at all. A little annoyed they use T6 pivot. I've never seen that before, I don't think. A little dainty pivot screw right there. Or pivot tooling. I believe it's actually all T6s. Where is it? Eight, six. Yeah, everything on here seems to be T6. All right, well, that's one little minor downside. Just be careful when you're taking this boy apart. Try to say boy and guy at the same time. I said bay or boy, guy. I don't know what I said. But uh, just rambling now. This is a beautiful knife, though. So, yeah, only real bad thing I can say about this. Uh, touch a lock stick and T6 pivot is kind of annoying. But otherwise, I like this a lot. Action is super smooth. Every bit as smooth as a Protec. Yeah. This feels like a, a Proto Protec, maybe. I don't know if this was made before Protec. Again, I have no idea of the timeline. This knife could have been made five years ago, could have been made 20 years ago. I don't know the difference. But, beautiful knife. Glad to have it. And uh, we'll move on to my last knife. 
So that was 315. This was 260. This is a Paragon Knives Phoenix. Oh, not much in the way of packaging. Cardboard box with the knife in the bag. Okay, well, I've never handled one of these before. Never handled the Warlock because I live in a state where you cannot carry double-edged knives. Is that rust or is it just red? No, it's just the lighting. Um, let me see if I can figure out how to use this thing. Okay, yeah. It's a little hard in the uh, in the restricted space I have here. Oh, nice blade stock actually for blade grind could be better there. You can probably see. Not super even on the swedge, but uh, interesting compound grind there. Not quite sure why. What is going on with that grind? Is that what the hell is happening here? Okay, so you can see on this side. You have a hollow ground here, nice, if anything, very early sharpening choil. It doesn't have to be that, that far out, maybe it's so you don't hit the aluminum here. But nice hollow grind. And then for some reason, okay, let me start on the other side. The other side's normal. Nice hollow grind right there. Then you get into a flat grind up top, usually to enforce the tip, to reinforce the tip rather is why they do that. Makes sense, right? Hollow grind, flat grind. On this side, hollow grind, what looks to be a flat grind and then a, another flat grind? Like what is happening right there? What's with this bump? Let's see if I can get this here. Ow, poke myself a little bit there. You can see, looks like there's three grinds here. What the hell is going on? What is this here? I don't know what's going on with that. I've never seen that before in my life. I've seen a lot of compound grinds. I've never seen one like that. Anyway, so the grind on this could be better. Um, then again, I don't think people buy these necessarily for uh, art pieces. These are fidget toys. So how these work is that you have these two knurled buttons right here. You press them together and they tension apart the scales. And then the blade once, I know these take a while to loosen up, so I'm not going to dig them for that, but the blade can then slide out the side, and then it gets to the top, and you release, and it clamps back closed. So it's the gravity knife. I never handled one of these before, so excuse me if I'm a little awkward. I've seen a lot of videos on them. Um, anyway, like I said, uh, I think I was saying before, but I might have I might have got interrupted by something. I've never handled one of these because most of their knives are double-edged. And I live in a state where you can't carry double-edged knives. And until 2017, we couldn't own gravity knives. So I live in Michigan. So uh, I've always wanted one of these, but I uh, never really had the chance until recently. And uh, I saved up enough money, and I decided to get me one. Wow, that grind is awful. You can see here in between the swedge and the hollow grind how much space there is. Then over here, there's, somewhat, there's like twice as much. That's a really bad grind. That's one of the worst grinds I've seen on production. I'll be honest right there with you. Like all the CGRBs and the CVVs I show you have better grinds than this. So, um, how's the edge? Oh, I'm going to be disappointed again, aren't I? Uh, it looks like they, they, you could, they could have made the bevel a little more even. It's really thin, then it gets wide, then you have this bulge up here. And then it gets wide, and then it's thin again. Then over here, it's actually, no, it's not consistent at all. It's wider all around, for sure. Tip is still thin. You got the same bulge right here. I don't know what's going on. This bevel is not even at all. The grind is even. Whoever did the blade work was probably drunk or something. I don't know. But, uh, oh, that was smooth. That was nice. Again, people buy these as fidget toys. Come on. There we go. Sorry, I can't really do this on camera. It's a little awkward to do it. And it's still loosening up. Okay, not digging up for that. I know they take time because they make them really tight. Like this thing has very little movement at all right now. And it takes very good machining to get that kind of tolerance. So kudos to them for that. Again, the blade grind, you guys, I'm sure it can do better. Like that's just awful. But uh, the tolerances on the handle, very nice.
Very, very nice. So that's what I meant earlier when I was talking about the Olsen, saying that I might be playing with my next knife more. I'll definitely be playing with this more. Again, it's not supposed to be a showpiece. This is a more of an adult fidget toy. I guess maybe you can call it a showpiece for that, you know, it's something to show off to your friends. But, uh, I don't know. Th those grinds just, they keep bugging me. I, keep going. I know they keep going back to the grinds, but come on. I'm not a knife maker, but Jesus. So yeah, that's the Paragon Phoenix. Um, if you want a $260 fidget toy, I highly recommend one of these or the Warlock. See if I can let me see if I can just move my camera. I have nothing else to do, right? I don't have to keep this consistent. Nope. Nope. Just embarrassing myself now. Okay, that was pretty good. Didn't really get it on camera though. Anyway, yeah, Paragon Phoenix, 260 bucks, S30V blade, aluminum scales, pretty cool. Gravity knife made in the USA. Of course, being uh, gravity knives are illegal to import for some stupid reason. But uh, yeah, pretty cool knife. Not thrilled on some of the. Oh, didn't quite open it there. There we go. Not thrilled on some of the fit, finish and quality issues, but. Uh, it's certainly fun, and I'll be playing with this. Probably won't sell it, probably keep it as an adult fidget toy. I like things I can play with, especially unique ones like this. No one else makes something like this. As you can see, it says patent pending. They they created this. No, they didn't steal this from anybody. No, I don't think anyone else had this clamshell design before. That was smooth. But uh, yeah, if you want one of these, they're the only game in town, and I recommend it. Wow, that finishing was very nice, actually, on the scales. I like that logo. Yeah, finishing outside is very, very nice. Beautiful. And this is not a small knife, in case you haven't, haven't noticed. Let me put up some size comparisons here. Here's the Paragon Phoenix. There's that giant heavy Barranca, which weighs like three times as much. There's the Mangrove. Here, app size comparison. Alliance, Pat Hammond, Scout. Perfect. Virtually the same size, right? Yeah. So again, I know I'm going back and forth on this thing a lot. I'm talking a lot on this one, but this was one of the ones I was looking forward to the most. So yeah, I'm just rambling, repeating the same information. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop this video now. So any of these knives in here, pretty good, pretty good. Um, if you want to buy one of these, and if you can buy them local, I say look them over and find one with a good blade grind. If they make them with good blade grind, like I've never handled another one before, so I don't know if they're all like this. So I just got a lemon. But, uh, yeah, this is pretty sweet. All these other knives I like a lot. Uh, it's to recap. Pick one with a good grind. Don't buy the scales, CF scales. And everything else is go for it. They're all cool. All very good knives. Olsen, pretty sweet. If you can find one, definitely do it. See, this is, this is a better gravity knife than the Phoenix. <laughs> Maybe a little exaggeration there. Um, totally different beast. But yeah, I'm going to stop before I keep rambling. So have a good day, weekend, whatever it is. I don't know when I'm going to publish this. It's a Monday right now. And uh, it doesn't matter to anyone. So goodbye. Have a good day. Hope you enjoyed this long-ass video.